Okay, so welcome to another in our series of Edge Revision webinars. Uh, this time we're going to ask 10 questions to check your understanding of the labour market. Good luck with these questions. Question number one. In a country where labour markets are perfectly competitive, the government reduces the rate of income tax paid by female workers. What impact, what effect will this have on the wages before tax paid by employers to both male and female workers? Press the pause button, have a go at the question, come back to me in a few seconds when you want the answer. So what do you think the answer is to question one? The correct response is B. Wages of male and female workers can both expected to, to fall. Here's the reasoning. The key is to understand the impact of the tax cut on the aggregate supply of labour in the economy. A fall in income tax for female workers increases the incentives for them to be economically active in the labour market. And therefore, other things remaining the same, the female labour supply increases, as will the total labour supply in the economy. As a consequence, other things remaining the same, catchers paribus, wages for both groups of workers will fall, perhaps in real terms, because the aggregate labour supply is increased. There's more competition of people for jobs. Here's question two. The country's government increases the proportion of the tax it gets from income tax and reduces, cuts the proportion of tax revenue it gets from VAT. What is likely to be the impact on the distribution of income and also on work incentives? Have a go. OK, question number two. Government shifting the burden of tax away from VAT towards progressive income tax? The right answer is B. Distribution of income should become more equal. Work incentives may worsen, may decrease. Indirect taxes tend on, a whole, on the whole to have a regressive effect on income distribution, whereas income tax is progressive. The marginal rate of tax goes up with income. And therefore, if the income tax increases, the distribution of income will become more equal. The scale of income inequality will fall. However, higher income taxes could lead to a worsening or a deterioration in work incentives if the post-tax wage rate declines. In other words, the opportunity cost of leisure has come down. Here's question three. An employer currently employs 70 workers. Each worker is paid the same wage rate. Now, initially, the wage rate paid is £15 per hour. But in order to attract an additional extra worker, the employer must raise the wage rate to £15.50 per hour. And the question is, what is the marginal cost of employing the 71st worker? Press the pause button. I'll be back in a few minutes with the right answer. OK, I'm back. What's the right answer to question three? Correct answer is C, 50 pounds and 50 pence. The marginal cost of labour is the cost to a firm of, of taking on one extra employee. So the 71st worker, that will cost them 15 pound 50 per hour, but 50p per hour extra has to be paid to each of the existing 70 workers. That's another 35 pounds. Add that to 15 pound 50, we get 50 pounds and 50p. The key is in the question, the assumption made here, which is mentioned in the question, is that each worker is paid the same wage rate. Question number four. The diagram shows an industry's demand for and supply of labour. Initially, the labour market is in equilibrium. The workers then form a trade union which negotiates a wage equal to W0. Question is, what's the effect on the level of employment in the industry? Have a go at question four. Press the pause button. What's the impact on employment in this market? The answer is D. Quite a few students initially um, misread it as unemployment. And it is true that in this situation, if you have an equilibrium wage of, well, wage of W0, that creates excess supply of LN. However, this is about employment. Initially, the employment level was M. When the wage rate goes up, you move up the labour demand curve to a level of employment L. 
So therefore, there is a decrease in employment equal to LM. Question number five. Oh, before we do that, a bit of data. Yeah, okay, so a question on unemployment and trade unions, sorry, uh, tells us that, in fact, unions have become less important in the labour market. In fact, in 2016, in England, figures are slightly different for Scotland and Wales, the proportion of workers who are members of a union in the UK dipped to 22%. Less than one worker in four is a member of a union. Question number five. In 2015, a company drilling for oil wished to cut its workforce because of a dip, a fall in the price of oil. The trade union opposed the proposal. Which situation would have helped the trade union in those negotiations? Have a go at question five. So what would have helped the unions try to prevent job losses? The answer is B, that the cost of labour had been a small proportion or percentage of total cost. When wages are low uh, as a share of total cost, then the demand for labour tends to be wage inelastic. The companies, the oil companies' profits aren't hugely dependent on labour costs. They're more dependent on the price of oil they can get for their product. Indeed, when wage costs are a small percentage of total labour, of total costs, the demand curve for labour tends to be like the diagram on the right hand side here, fairly inelastic. Question number six. The table below shows the values of the Gini coefficient for some countries in 2007. Using the information, which statement is correct? Okay, so the answer to question six is A. Income is more equally distributed in Denmark than it is in France because Denmark has a lower Gini coefficient. Namibia, of course, has a very high Gini coefficient, 74.3 or 0.743. The Gini coefficient is basically a number which condenses the entire income distribution for a nation into a single number. If it's zero, it's perfect equality. Or if it's 100 or 1 sometimes, uh, it's perfect inequality. Can you visualise the Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient for Namibia? Very unequal uh, level of income distribution there. Question 7. Which of the following can be regarded as a non-monetary factor affecting labour supply to an industry? Which of the following can be regarded as a non-monetary factor affecting the labour supply to an industry. Have a go. And the correct answer to question seven is D, the working conditions, the, the hours, the health and safety negotiated for employees by a trade union. The other three, of course, have an aspect of monetary reward, whereas we're looking for non-monetary factors. Non-wage factors would include things like job risk, job security, working conditions, the extent to which workers have to work antisocial hours, and uh, opportunities for career progression, to live and work overseas, and much else besides. Three questions to go. A couple of tricky theory questions coming up. The diagram below on the bottom right there shows a labour market in which labour is supplied competitively, but there is a monopsony employer. Which of the following, A, B, C or D, is the correct profit maximising equilibrium in this labour market? Press the pause button, have a go at this tricky question. OK, the right answer to question 8. Did you get it right? Here it comes. The answer is A. With a monopsony... A profit-maximising monopsis is going to employ people, if you follow my cursor here, to the point where the marginal labour cost equals the marginal revenue product, which is employment level QL1. Now, in theory, they could pay wage W3 to those workers, but in fact, they only have to use the labour supply curve, the average cost of labour, as their guide, so they can employ QL1 workers at wage W1. In that sense, that's not a socially optimum wage. They're paying a wage below what might be seen as socially optimal. 
and this is a potential cause of labour market failure. Two questions to go. The diagram again, bottom right, represents an industry as to the labour market which has a monopsony employer, but then a national minimum wage is introduced by the government. The question is, what is the impact on this labour market of the introduction of a minimum wage? A, B, C or D. Have a go at this question for a few seconds. Press that pause button, think about it, and then come back to me. We'll go through the answer together. And the correct answer to question nine, a minimum wage with a monopsonist is C, the wage rate will go up and employment will rise as well from QL1 to QL2. If you follow my cursor, once you bring a minimum wage in, that's a pay floor. You can't pay below this level. So this becomes the marginal labour cost up to this point where they have to start raising the wage. If this is the marginal cost of labour now. It meets the marginal revenue product at QL2 here. So they will pay QL, they'll employ QL2 people and pay them the minimum wage. So employment will have increased and the wage rate paid to workers will have increased. So the answer there is C. Here's our last question. The table below provides some data on the quantity of labour, number of workers employed, the level of output from those workers, and the revenue for a firm, the price they can sell uh, a given output at. The question is, what is the marginal revenue product of the third worker employed? What is the marginal revenue product of the third worker employed? Have a go. Press the pause button. Last question. Good luck with this one. Okay, the right answer is B. You see, the third worker employed adds four units to total output. Output goes up from 15 to 19. Those four units can then be sold in the market for £18 each. So if the marginal product of the third worker is four, and those four units of production can be sold for £18 each, employing the third worker is going to add £72 of revenue to the business. Hope you got on okay with those questions. Some of them were pretty tricky. If you want to access all of our labour market resources, then all you have to do is press uh, your camera phone towards the QR code in the bottom right-hand corner. Point the camera phone at that QR code. That should give you the link automatically to our labour market landing page where we stick all of our study notes, all of our exam videos, all of our technique videos, all of our blog entries of, of real interest. So if you really want to get a hang on labour market economics, that is the QR code to, to use. Thanks for joining in. Edge number nine, a test of 10 questions on labour market economics.